All right, Red Devil Nation, thanks for joining us again. Um, we are really happy to have Aaron Bongo, class of 2018, joining us tonight, um, former volleyball player. Aaron, just talk to us, tell us off the bat where you're from, how you found Dickinson and your journey to Carlisle. Sure, yeah, um, it's great to be here. Um, so I am from Rockaway, New Jersey, so Northern New Jersey area. Um, found Dickinson kind of just because I was looking for a great academic school and I also wanted to play volleyball. So, you know, just it fit so well. I was looking in the Centennial Conference and when I got on the campus, just fell in love with the atmosphere, the town and everything about it just was um, awesome. And so I went early decision two, I think. And yeah, I ended up there and it was, it was great. I'm so glad, so, so glad of my decision. It was great. So you mentioned you, you kind of stumbled into Dickinson looking through the conference. We're not judging. Where else, where else <laughs> were you looking? Because I feel like so many athletes, including yeah. myself when I was a student athlete coming from high school, had that story of just happened to stumble upon Dickinson. Yeah, no, I was looking at Muhlenberg, Gettysburg, all of our rivals, of course. And um, I never really heard of Dickinson. And I went to visit, met the coach. And yeah, it was awesome. The coach really was kind of also who drew me into the school and, and told me that they're really building up the program and, um, you know, coming in as a freshman that I may see a lot more playing time at Dickinson than I would at maybe some of the other schools, which was obviously appealing. Um, and so I met the team and the girls and it was just a great fit. Um, so definitely felt more like at home and comfortable at Dickinson. Um, so yeah. a little bit about the program when you were here, you were really part of a reemergence of Dickinson volleyball, yeah. more or less. Um, so there was a time here when it wasn't as prominent as it is now. Yeah. How did it feel to be <laughs> part of that class and part of that group that really started to rebuild and bring Dickinson volleyball back? Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, I remember coming in my freshman year, we didn't even have any seniors on the team, I don't think, when I was a freshman. And we had – I think two juniors. It was a small team too. There's two juniors, three or four sophomores. And then our class was the biggest class, our freshman class. We had seven girls, um, which is pretty big for a volleyball team too. Um, so coming in, we, you know, knew we were building up the program and we just, as we went, you know, throughout our years, I feel like our class was really, um, you know, had to set a precedent to go forward, especially with some of the younger girls coming in. We had a lot of girls coming in and um, it was really cool just to see the program build and the, the dynamics change and, um, you know, girls were coming in, taking it more seriously. We were focused at practice. Um, we were winning games that we had never really won before. You know, one that sticks out in my mind is Haverford. We beat Haverford, I think, in 2016. And I think that was my sophomore or junior year. And it was the first time we beat Haverford in years. Like, the program hasn't beaten Haverford since I don't even know. And so that – that was pretty cool to see the progression um, go like that. So yeah, it was awesome. Now talk about some of your relationships with your teammates. You said there were really no seniors. You guys as freshmen were really the biggest class when you got here. So how did that relationship work? How did your relationships work? Cause you guys were really all in this together. Yeah, we had to figure out a team dynamic that worked and all of the girls, I think, we had a great culture all four of my years. The, the teammate, the team culture that we had was, I feel like unlike a lot of other schools cultures. And I don't know why that was. I think, you know, we just set a standard and we all were, you know, we respected each other. We, I felt like didn't really have, you know, that, that what's the word, um, you know, scared of the seniors, scared of the older classmen. It was, we respected them and their experience, but they, we were all on the court together. And, you know, no matter what year you are, you're on this 900 square feet of a volleyball court and you've got to work together no matter what year you are. And I think with coming in without seniors, we all just, you know, bonded and got really close and, and set that forward um, to, to, you know, pass down to the, the girls coming in after us. And it was pretty cool to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, now, diverging a little bit over to the student part of student athlete, um, talk a little bit about your time here as a student. You know, what did you get interested in? How did you get interested in it? And how did you really select your major? That's a good question. I um, reason why Dickinson drew me to is the liberal arts, you know, education because at the time I I came in and I really I was undecided freshman freshman and sophomore year. 
Um, wasn't really sure what I was interested in. I liked math and science, but wasn't, you know, wasn't too sure. And so I just kind of took a variety of classes, you know, those um, general classes freshman year where you have to take, you know, the, right. the language. All, all those the general class. requirements we all had to yeah. do. And it, it really helped shape, though, what I was interested in, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, and I came to um, deciding my major, I think, end of sophomore year um, for math. So it was math major. Um, and it was still cool though, because there was a lot of flexibility in my schedule to be able to take the other classes like religion and language and, you know, all the other courses that, you know, I feel like at other schools and other programs, it's more rigid and it, you know, they didn't have room to, to go abroad or to do the things that I got to do, which I'm so grateful for. Um, and yeah, there, there was so much flexibility and, and being, um, you know, a division three athlete, but also being able to be in a sorority and go abroad and be part of the Christian fellowship. There was so many things I think I would have had to give up at other schools um, that weren't as like flexible or, you know, understanding and um, Dickinson just had it all too. It was just great for me. So um, yeah. So that was a perfect segue by you. Cause that was right into the next question of what else did you do outside of volleyball? Because Dickinson does have all these great hidden things that athletes are actually able to do. And to your point, I had friends who played at other schools where they'd say, oh, you got to do this or yeah, you're an FCA too. or you're a tour guide or you're in a frat, or, you know, fraternity, you're in a sorority. Yeah, they were yeah. so shocked that we actually had the ability to do all that. Yeah, no, same. I had a lot of friends who said all they were able to do was volleyball in school. And, you know, I really lucked out with the, the you know, again, understanding with the coaches, the, the faculty, professors, you know, they wanted you to be involved. They wanted you to be a part as, of as much as you wanted to be in. Um, and that was huge. Like I got to be a part of, like I said, I, I rushed and I was in a sorority and I didn't think I would, but you know, I met a really great group of girls and um, just really helped shape my, my friendships. And it was cool to have my volleyball friends who are, you know, lifetime lifetime friends and, and teammates but then to branch out and meet girls in you know other majors or things that I you know may not have met if I wasn't part of the sorority or whatever and um you know be a part of go, going abroad was huge I came in and I didn't even know that it was on my radar I didn't even think about it my siblings they're older than me they they didn't really go abroad at their colleges but I feel like coming into Dickinson freshman year it was you know what are you interested in and where do you want to go abroad and I remember being like abroad like I didn't even I didn't even think about it and I'm so happy I, I went abroad in spring of 2017 to Italy and it was the best one of the best experiences of my college career so that was incredible too but yeah everything being involved in so many different things and having different you know friend groups and and being um, involved everywhere was a really big plus and I always I always bring that up when I talk about my Dickinson experience so no I think it's one of the really key factors that we have over a lot of these other colleges and that we can pitch to kids is this opportunity to do so many different things, including that abroad experience. And touching on that a little bit, you said it was you know, one of the highlights of your life thus far. How do you think being able to go abroad and experience another, other countries and other cultures has helped to kind of broaden you as an individual? That's a great question. Um, yeah, I never left. I mean, I think I left the country once for, you know, a vacation when I was younger to, you know, the Bahamas or something like that. But other than that, I never really had left the country or traveled or anything. Um, so huge growing experience and, you know, really stepping outside my comfort zone to a country that, you know, I didn't know the language that well. I took a couple semesters, so I felt like pretty comfortable, you know, mm -hmm. speaking Italian, but, you know, really just diving into another culture, another language. It just, you know, it puts you in an uncomfortable position. You know, you really have to to explore and and you know just get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And it was it was really cool to to see that. And um, I got to travel. You know, Europe is just so easy to travel. So I got to go to a ton of different countries. And I actually met up with some people on my spring break at in Malaga. You know, in the Dickinson Study Abroad program there. So I met some people there, and it was just amazing to just explore the world and also be able to take really engaging classes abroad too. Um, I got to take a class at the University of Bologna. Um, so that was cool being in a classroom with Italian students um, and a couple at the Dickinson Center too. But um, it was a huge learning experience, growing experience. It was, yeah, great. So when you come back, 
you're now a senior, you have your senior season, now you're looking for that next step after graduation. Talk a little bit about the field you got into. I know you did an, a pretty nice internship with the company GD. You mm -hmm. started there, now you've moved on since. So talk a little bit about how you found your field and how you've progressed through your career thus far. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Dickinson, I, I'll just start off by saying, for such a small school, the network and alumni relations and um, community that is from Dickinson is incredible. So um, I found my, I was an intern, a software engineer intern at General Dynamics Mission Systems for uh, two summers. And that kind of started with a teammate of mine um, and I talking about internships and she told me her dad worked for a company and connected me to him and you know that network there it just was the, this, the foot in the door for me and um, so I entered there and that turned into the full-time job and from there I, I just kind of kept like looking forward well before I accepted that I guess I'll back up a bit my senior year I um, I did look into other jobs and reached out to some Dickinson alum and Every time I reached out to someone, they were more than happy to, to, you know, set me up with someone, talk to someone, you know, talk about what they're doing. Um, so there were just so many people that were willing to help me. And like, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and then ended up back at, you know, General Dynamics for my full time position after college. And, um, you know, it was such a great first job after college. Um, but for me, I was a math major and I felt like I needed to be more in the math field. Um, so I started looking into, you know, how to transition, where, where else I could go next, um, and actually stumbled upon MITRE, um, which is where I'm at now. And um, again, kind of through network connection that's from someone I met. And it's, it's really, it's amazing how many people are willing to help if you just reach out and ask and um, have those conversations. Um, so yeah, I just started my new position. I am an operations research analyst and I started in March. <laughs> so right at the beginning of uh, when COVID-19 really hit. So um, it's been an interesting experience in a new job, all virtual, but you know, always learning and always adapting. So, you know, just yeah. another thing to learn. The, the way of the world right now. Yeah, uh, everyone, yeah. But you did touch on it a little bit, that whole network that Dickinson has, you know, for such a small school. It's unbelievable places you go. And no matter where I've been in my career in collegiate athletics, somehow someone knows Dickinson or you yeah. see someone wearing a sweatshirt or a, or a T-shirt wherever I've been and go, oh, Dickinson, like, how do you, you know, how do you know them? Yeah. Um, talk about how that was really influential in you landing your first couple jobs. You said you landed the internship through a teammate, but just being able to network with so many different people and how Dickinson helped you in that process. Yeah, it it's funny, like you said, when when someone hears like, oh, you know Dickinson or you're from Dickinson, it, it's so funny because it is such a small school, so you get so excited and you have that immediate like connection of, oh, like you know Carlisle, Pennsylvania, like that's so cool and just such great memories and you just start to talk and, um, I just feel like the, you know, alumni are just, like I said, so willing to help. And, and even just the people that you're with, your, you know, my, my teammate, my friends, like they're all just looking out for you and really want, you know, the best for you. And, you know, same goes for some of my friends. If I hear something, oh, you know, there's that job, this job, oh, my friend is looking for something. And it's just, you know, you always have to look out for, for each other. And, and I think that's something like Dickinson very much so cultivated, or at least, I think something from, you know, my, my volleyball experience that really mm -hmm. taught me to, you know, look out for each other and, and you're on a team and you work together. And, um, so that, that's something from there, but, um, moving forward with just the connections, it helped me. I know the career center was super real, like a really great, um, you know, stepping stone too, because they encouraged reaching out. They would help, you know, give you some, some names to people like, to talk to that are in this field, you know, because when you're graduating, you don't know what a job's going to be like, you know, in actuality, you read the, you know, what the description is, but right. it could be totally different. So it was helpful, you know, the career it's center. Like it's never, never as accurate as the description. Exactly. <laughs> it's never what you think it is. So I remember the career center would just say, you know, reach out to people, go to the alumni network or go to LinkedIn and, um, or, you know, they handed me a couple of names, I think one time and said, here's a couple of people, go reach out to them. And, you know, they'll be willing to talk about it. So I really think just the, the real world experience, like hearing from the people actually in the roles and, um, you know, that was something that was, I learned moving forward that I took with me, like, you know, going into new jobs, I gotta, I have to talk to the people that are actually doing this. I can't just, 
you know, online, just read what's online and apply without really putting a face to the name. Um, so, yeah. Now on a personal level, as we wrap up here, just talk about the relationships that you've built, not with so much alumni, but with your teammates and your friends. You know, you were in FCA, you were in a sorority, you played volleyball. Mm -hmm. The relationships that you've cultivated here over four years, how have those been influential in your life now two years removed from Carlisle? Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. I mean, especially down in the Arlington, Virginia, DC area, which is where I'm at, it's, there's such a pocket of Dickinson people and it's so cool that I can, you know, see familiar faces in a whole new area I just moved to. And, um, it's pretty amazing how, you know, everyone, I think my class in general, I, I really enjoyed my classmates and, and, um, peers and I felt like we all kind of knew each other and we're really just friendly with each other and so if I see someone or you know it's just cool to have that connection down here but with some of my closest friends I you know freshman year I roomed with my best friend they put us together and she was on the team with me and um you know she and I roomed together all four years of college and we are just best friends and stay in contact you know to this day and do visits all the time and um, and actually the, the team, the volleyball team, we were just chatting about doing a reunion, hopefully in the next year and getting together. And we just, I don't know, I love the group chat because it's always good to hear about how everyone's doing. And, um, I feel like we've all really stayed pretty close, which is, I feel like unheard of too, and in, in other mm -hmm. schools and people lose contact, but, um, you know, we're always just, you know, chatting and seeing what's going on in everyone's life. And I made some of my best friends from, from volleyball and, and Dickinson. So it's really awesome. And when you guys talk and you talked about doing the reunion and, or coming back and, you know, now, especially with a new coach who is mm -hmm. building the alumni, her alumni network, why do you guys see it as it's important to give back and to stay in contact with uh, the program and with the current team, most importantly? Yeah, I think last year, actually, a couple of us went back for homecoming and met the new coach and met some of the girls that we've never met before. And, um, it's just cool to, to see where the program is now. And I think the coach, um, she is awesome. She's reached out to us and tried to keep the connections with us. And we weren't even, you know, her athletes, but she loves the, the close knit group of Dickinson college volleyball that has, um, grown over the years. And she's done a great job with, with keeping connections alive. And, um, I think it's, it's cool to keep, the, the history there too of, you know, Hey, we started out, we were, we were, you know, kind of the bottom of the conference. Like we weren't, you know, the best team out there. And I think knowing that and how far we've come and how hard we've worked to get there that, you know, to keep that in mind for the girls that are, you know, in it now, just, I think is, it's pretty cool. I don't know, especially for, for now, I think it's some of the, the girls that are seniors were freshmen when I was a senior and to see how much they've grown and to follow them throughout their careers. It's, it's really cool to watch. Right. And as we wrap up here, you know, the last question I have for you is, and you've hit on this point a lot, but why are you proud to be a Dickinsonian? Why are you proud of your time here? And why would you encourage others to come here? Yeah, so many reasons. I loved my Dickinson experience. Um, I, I say it's so unique. And, um, you know, with all of the different things I was involved with, and being able to still have a really good education and, um, you know, great professors and great connections and all of that plus all of the extracurriculars and, and social things that I was able to be a part of um I don't think I really truly don't feel like that's something you can get anywhere else and um you know maybe you could get parts of it you know maybe you could get the abroad experience somewhere else but maybe not get the you know the social interactions you would want or you know I think there's little gives and takes but I feel like Dickinson if you know I you're really looking to get involved and have a really good balance um, of things going on for you. It's, it's a great place. Um, and I'd encourage people who, you know, don't exactly know what they want or, you know, feel like they're interested in a ton of different things. It's, it's perfect. You can explore totally different, you know, avenues and, and double major, triple major. I've heard of at Dickinson, like, you know, you could do really so much um, at Dickinson. And so I would encourage I would totally encourage that for, for kids going in, for students going in. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us tonight and for sharing your story and uh, your time here and even about what you do now and um, encouraging others to join us. You know, we're always, we're always looking for more Red Devils, but we're always, always proud of the ones who have uh, worn the red. So thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. And we look forward to seeing you back on campus soon. I hope so. <laughs> All right, take care. Thanks. Bye.
Bye.